Who is the smartest straw hat? I'm not talking in terms of book smarts, but in combat. Battle IQ refers to intelligence in the context of fighting, meaning strategy, analyzing opponents, identifying weaknesses, improvising on the spot, creativity, seeing through deception, and more. So I've gone through the entire series and all major fights of the Straw Hats, and I've put together a comprehensive ranking of every Straw Hats battle IQ. And what I realized is that the smartest Straw Hats in combat are not necessarily the ones you may think. And there are several Straw Hats who are, in fact, severely underrated by readers. You may be surprised to learn that while most One Piece fans praise Luffy for his creativity and ingenuity in combat, and I personally came into this project fully ready to rank him at number one, after actually looking through everyone's showings, objectively speaking, Luffy very clearly does not have the highest battle IQ among the Straw Hat crew. So who's actually at number one? Well, I'm pretty sure the answer will surprise all of you, but let's start from the bottom. But before we get into it, I want to help you all out with your personal hygiene a little bit. First impressions are extremely important, and when someone sees you naked for the first time, you want to look well-groomed. It just makes you feel more confident, it makes you more attractive. That's all done for you with Manscaped, the sponsor for this video. Right now, a lot of you probably don't have a good way to groom yourself down there. I don't know what exactly you're awkwardly doing, but it probably doesn't look good. If you actually want to look good for that first unveiling, you should be using Manscaped's lawnmower with different models for the level that you're looking for. The lawnmower 3.0 Plus, the 4.0 Pro, or the 5.0 Ultra. Each lawnmower is designed for maximum comfort and smoothness so that you can shave freely without worrying about getting cuts or not getting a good finish. The 3.0 Plus has a ceramic blade with a plastic guard. The 4.0 has an RPM motor that makes shaving fast, easy, and efficient. And the 5.0 is literally the best manscaping tool in existence, with next-gen dual skin-safe blade heads that make shaving down there feel so smooth that you're not gonna feel a thing. And the best part is, if you order one right now, you're gonna get 20% off and free shipping when you use my promo code MORGE at manscaped.com. So give your boys the grooming that they deserve and join 10 million million other men who already use Manscaped for their personal grooming and hygiene. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code MORGE at manscaped.com. Just hit the link in the description below. So that aside, at number 10 I have Jinbei. Now this is absolutely zero disrespect to Jinbei, it's entirely possible that Jinbei has an extremely high battle IQ based on his long tenured experience and the fact that he is generally a wise character. But the reality is that as the newest member of the crew, Jinbei hasn't yet had any time to show any high-level battle IQ. In the bits of combat that we have seen so far, he hasn't had any significant moments of cunning or big brain plays. As such, I'm going to put Jinbei at 10th just by default, not because I think Jinbei is dumb, but because it wouldn't be fair to put him above Straw Hats, who have actually shown battle IQ so far. At number 9 we have Brook, for similar reasons to Jinbei. Brook has no extended fights in the story, so he hasn't had much opportunity to show battle IQ. However, Brook does have one moment. When Big Mom is on the ship, Brook asks to see her panties, which causes her just enough surprise for Brook to blitz her, explaining that the plan from the start was to go after Zeus. It's only one moment, it's brief, but it is something, which means technically Brook ranks above Jinbei. At number 8 we have Frankie, and Frankie is an interesting case because sometimes he fights extremely stupidly. We see this multiple times. In the Fukuro fight, Frankie stubbornly decides to just tank Fukuro's punches that are clearly hurting him, just to prove a point. Similarly, Frankie opts to fight Senor Pink exclusively with melee attacks instead of weapons in a show of manliness. While these decisions are undoubtedly stupid, I view them as Frankie opting for the harder route out of pride, not because he's actually stupid. This is because we can see him use his brains occasionally, like when he tricked Nero by pretending to be helpless only to catch Nero in his centaur form trap. He also had to improvise on the fly to figure out how to catch Fukuro when Fukuro was flying and Frankie was getting swept away by the waterfall. These aren't huge standout moments, but Frankie's at least been shown having battle IQ moments in combat a bit more frequently than the Straw Hats below him, so number 8 is about fair. And at number 7 we have Robin. Now I initially had half a mind to put Robin last, because as many readers have noted, Robin, on paper, has an absolutely broken ability that she does not seem to use to its full extent. There's no real reason Robin can't just start every fight by ripping off her opponent's eyeballs. The fact that there are so many ways to abuse this power that she just never resorts to could be used as an argument for Robin having a terrible battle IQ. 
However, I will give her a pass for this, as it's likely more so that Oda himself just didn't want Robin's ability to be too unfair, especially pre-time skip. So let's say it's not necessarily Robin being dumb, but her usage is deliberately limited by the story. I'm still not going to place her highly on the list, but I will note that there are moments where she pulls off some creative extended combos with her fruit, such as flipping Yama's dials back on him while she swung him around, before rolling him away. At number 6 we have Zoro. I think a lot of people may be upset with this ranking, but keep in mind that from here on, no Straw Hats are bad in terms of battle IQ. They are all fairly smart, it's just that the competition for the top spots is fierce, and just objectively speaking, Zoro has far fewer moments where he shows significant battle IQ to win a fight than the remaining Straw Hats. In fact, a common recurring theme is that Zoro strongly dislikes dealing with tricky opponents, and rather than figuring out some actual strategy to deal with them, his answer tends to usually just be to use a stronger attack. Against Kabaji, Zoro was frustrated by Kabaji's tricks, and at the end of the day, Zoro pretty much just tanked through it all and cut him down. In Skypiea, Zoro struggled with ranged users, Prom's flash guns, and Ohm's extending sword. And the answer to both was basically just overpowering them with a stronger ranged attack. Against Pika, who was a tricky opponent because Zoro couldn't find him, yet again the answer was basically, fuck it, I'll just cut up the whole body. Basically, the solution to most of Zoro's fights are just, I need to cut better. This isn't an insult to his character, as Zoro is a very sharp and analytical character in other ways, but Zoro's fights specifically tend to emphasize willpower and surpassing one's limits, meaning less strategy and outsmarting the opponent, and more so, learning to cut better. To be fair, post time skip, Zoro does seem at the very least to be more analytical than he used to be in his recent fights. As he was able to figure out how King's flames worked, though ultimately with Advanced Conqueror's hockey it was implied that Zoro could cut King with or without the flames on, so this realization didn't actually matter much, and with the Pika fight for the first time we did see Zoro actually have to think through a plan to deal with his opponent, and though the options he thought through are comically simple and his final decision was literally just to cut Pika up anyway, at least the this recent pair of fights do show Zoro having to think more than he used to before. At number 5 we have Nami. Now Nami was difficult to place. In terms of battle IQ, I do give huge, huge weight to weak characters who are able to use strategies and tactics to overcome exponentially stronger opponents, as that is the best measure of battle IQ. Battle IQ should be measured by how far a character can punch above their weight class thanks to their intellect, strategy, and resourcefulness. That's why Batman is the poster child for Battle IQ. He takes on extreme superpowered beings with the abilities of a normal person. However, reading Nami's fights, two things stand out. First of all, whereas Nami is a normal person, she has an extremely, extremely overwhelmingly powerful weapon. The Climb Attack can literally create lightning and illusions and other absurdly powerful abilities. For a while, Nami had an argument for the highest attack power in the crew, thanks to the Climb Attack. Yes, Nami is the only one who can make the weapon do the insane things that it does, but that's thanks to her knowledge of the weather. When she makes a thundercloud, it's because of her meteorology IQ, not battle IQ. How she then uses that thundercloud in a fight is battle IQ, but Nami still goes into every fight with the ability to create thunderclouds and illusions and so on. As such, I don't view Nami as fighting with the same handicap as, say, Usopp, who for the majority of pre-time skip had to fight with just a normal slingshot and random bullshit he carried around, like eggs, hot sauce, paper mache, and so on. Now Nami still has impressive battle IQ. Even before she figured out the climb attack, Nami, with the physical capabilities of a normal teenage girl, was able to fend off one of the best assassins in the Grand Line, using just tricks and tactics. We also see, against Khalifa, Nami was able to figure out the weakness of Khalifa's soap abilities, create a counter to it, and then fool Khalifa several times by using illusions in creative ways, all while setting up a big finisher. The only reason Nami doesn't rank higher is because I noticed that Oda had to write in a lot of plot-induced stupidity, otherwise known as PIS, for Nami to win her fights. Miss Doublefinger and Khalifa were both written to just straight up not attack Nami for extremely extended periods of time, and Khalifa literally even took a full bath in the middle of her fight with Nami after 
after Nami was completely helpless and immobile. On top of this, Nami was saved by Monster Chopper interrupting for a while. As such, while Nami is extremely smart and resourceful in battle, and has had to use cunning to survive against superhuman beings, Oda does clearly treat her with kid gloves a bit in fights. Now at number 4, we have the extremely controversial pick of Luffy. I know, I know, Luffy's so creative, he uses his ability so well, he just has to be number one. Well, look, while Luffy is extremely creative, and he does deserve to rank near the top of the crew, the reality is, once I look through the series, Luffy just objectively does not have an argument for number one. This will make sense when I compare Luffy to the three Straw Hats above him, but this is not to say that Luffy doesn't have an extremely high battle IQ. To begin with, Luffy's biggest strength in terms of battle IQ is definitely creativity. The way Luffy has thought to use his Gomu Gomu no Mi is nothing short of incredible. Stretching abilities are common in fiction, but there is absolutely no character that has utilized them in as many ways as Luffy. I mean, it's not just the variety of attacks. Gear Second alone and the concept of increasing blood flow to speed oneself up is so wildly creative. On top of that, Luffy is pretty good at figuring out the weaknesses in his opponent's abilities, such as realizing that water could counteract Crocodile, that Luffy could use the Ricochet to counteract Eno's mantra, and that Katakuri's Future Sight didn't work when Katakuri wasn't calm. However, the three characters above Luffy all have clear factors that separate them from Luffy. I'll make the comparison one by one. So at number three, we have Sanji. I've talked about this before in my past analysis of One Piece fights, but not only does Sanji regularly demonstrate high battle IQ, but his fights are literally defined by his battle IQ. Every single pre-timeskip fight that Sanji had follows a very specific template, where Sanji has to deal with an opponent that is using trickery or cheating in some way, and Sanji always has to find a cunning solution to the problem. Against Kurubi, Sanji was forced to fight underwater where he was severely handicapped and Kurubi had an extreme unfair advantage. Sanji ended up taking Kurubi's advantage and literally turning it into his own advantage by realizing that he could take the oxygen from Kurubi's gills and make Kurubi suffocate instead. Against Mr. Two, Sanji not only realized the flaw in Mr. Two's transformations and the window in which Sanji could strike, he was actually able to trick Mr. Two into transforming back so that Sanji could get hits in. Against Absalom, Sanji couldn't catch Absalom due to Absalom's invisibility. But Sanji quickly improvised and realized that he could pull out the salt stars that were meant to purify zombies and use them instead to reveal where Absalom was. Against Jaibura, who tried to deceive Sanji by making up a story to make Sanji let his guard down, Sanji reversed it on him and made Jaibura let his guard down instead. Literally every opponent pre-timeskip tried to cheat against or trick Sanji, and he's always the one that ends up tricking them instead. The Queen fight is in fact the first fight in the entire series where Sanji won in a more straightforward Forward manner and didn't have to outsmart his opponent halfway through the fight. Unlike Luffy and Zoro, Sanji is the only member of the monster trio where Battle IQ is actually consistently the centerpiece of the majority of his fights. I would go so far as to say that the ingenuity that Sanji showed against Kurubi is objectively the single most brilliant Battle IQ moment that any monster trio member has ever shown. In this moment, Sanji is genuinely helpless, drowning, completely physically outmatched, he has no tools, no no resources, no oxygen, he literally can't even throw an attack. In this moment, Sanji is basically as capable as Gaimon. Literally the only thing that Sanji has here is his brain, and he actually pulls it off. He defeats a fishman underwater using only his brain. That is the definition of a 400 IQ play. Going beyond that, the other reason that I put Sanji above Luffy is that while Luffy is pretty good at analyzing the opponent's weaknesses himself, this only applies to opponents that Luffy is fighting head on. Luffy has a glaring weakness in battle IQ, which is that Luffy usually does really, really bad when his opponents fight unfairly. I could go through the series, but the simplest example is the Foxy fight. Luffy was far stronger, faster, and a better fighter than Foxy. It should have been an absolute stomp, but Luffy just kept getting duped again and again and again by honestly stupidly simple gimmicks, until what was initially a gag fight eventually genuinely became a somewhat high difficulty fight just because Luffy can be tricked so easily and repeatedly even in the heat of battle. It's not even like Foxy is some mastermind. Foxy was a dumbass who would screw himself over plenty of times as well. 
he would pull out a lot of tricks that would literally only work on someone as dumb as Luffy. But the reality is, Luffy just doesn't deal well with unorthodox opponents. This is not debatable, this is an established, canonical fact that is explicitly stated. Opponents that use trickery are an Achilles heel for Luffy. As such, I'm not going to rank Luffy above Sanji in Battle IQ. Yes, Luffy is more creative, but creativity isn't everything. Luffy has a glaring, canonical weakness in Battle IQ, whereas Sanji has shown so far that in pretty much all of his fights in any situation, no matter how unfair, how unorthodox, or what tricks are used, Sanji can see through it and find a way to turn the tables on the opponent. And on top of this, Luffy isn't even the most creative straw hat. It can certainly look that way when you have a fruit that literally allows you to do anything you imagine, but Usopp at number 2 is obviously even more creative in combat than Luffy is, because Usopp has to be. I know the vast majority of you watching like Luffy a lot better than Usopp, and so you're ready to type up how Luffy is obviously the most creative fighter there is, but if you take a step back and think objectively of what Usopp has to do to win fights, and compare that to what Luffy has to do to win fights, it is just absurd to argue against Usopp. Out of all the Straw Hats, Usopp is very clearly the one who has to most consistently use his brain to figure out how to do the most with the least. And that is the actual definition of creativity. Usopp is just a regular dude, like me or you. In fact, pre-time skip, he was physically weaker than the average person. He can't create lightning or illusions like Nami. He has no broken devil fruit, no modifications. Usopp is very literally fighting superhuman monsters on the grand line with a slingshot, paper mache, frying pans, hot sauce, smoke pellets, just literal absolute bullshit. There is no other straw hat with as limited capabilities as Usopp who has had to punch so far outside their weight class and come out on top purely by relying on their brains to make gold out of sh**. See, we praise Luffy for his battle IQ because Luffy often relies on his creativity and fast learning to keep up with and surpass opponents who are otherwise stronger than him. But Luffy is usually at least physically somewhat comparable to his opponents to begin with. Maybe he starts off one or two weight classes below them. But with Usopp, that is never the case. With Usopp, he's starting fights 100 weight classes below his opponent. Even the weakest opponent Usopp ever fought, Chu, was a fishman officer. Remember, even the average fishman is 10 times stronger than Usopp, and Chu was one of the strongest fishmen, capable of leveling a forest. Usopp defeated him with a slingshot and a bottle of rum. That's battle IQ. I mean, just across the board, the Mr. Four duo, Perona, these are absurdly powerful superhumans that are exponentially stronger and more powerful than Usopp, yet he pulls it off time and again. Put it into perspective, you remember when Sabodi and Impel Down and Marine Ford were going on, and Luffy suddenly had to face a bunch of opponents exponentially more powerful than him, who he was completely outmatched against in terms of strength and abilities. Well, that's Usopp's experience against literally every single opponent. The difference is, Usopp has somehow found a way to win those mismatched fights regularly. That's Battle IQ. Whereas for Luffy, coming up with a creative strategy in battle can be as simple as just using a ricochet, or drinking water to shoot at his opponent. For Usopp, he has to improvise actually fully laid out, elaborate, multi-step plans. Like allowing himself to be caught, creating a smokescreen, slipping out of his shoes, imitating his opponent's voice, and setting up the perfect shot. Or tricking the opponent into giving him ammo for the impact dial, firing three shots, one to open the opponent up, one to trap them, one to shock them, then using the impact dial to clear the way, and finally landing the winning blow. There is no other straw hat that has to, on the spot, think this much, this far ahead, this frequently, just to get wins. And the simple, absolute proof that Usopp has far better battle IQ than Luffy is that they literally fought each other. Usopp is a regular guy, going up against a monster who can push apart skyscrapers and create earthquakes with his bare fists, who is impervious to all blunt damage, and who has the same superpowers as Mr. Fantastic as a bonus. This should be an effortless stomp for Luffy, except Usopp gives him an absolute battle, repeatedly outplaying Luffy, getting 
the better of him over and over and over again just through sheer strategy, smarts, and creativity. Luffy eventually wins when he finally manages to land a hit, because of course the physical disparity is just too absurdly huge for Usopp to hold out forever, but this entire fight is literally only logically possible because Usopp has better battle IQ than Luffy by a wide margin. Yes, Luffy was holding back, but that doesn't change the fact that Luffy is very clearly tricked, fooled, and outsmarted dozens of times over in this fight. It's not like Luffy is faking these reactions and his surprise each time to make Usopp feel better. And if you want to say, well, this fight doesn't prove who has better battle IQ because Usopp just came in with a better strategy and exploited Luffy's weaknesses better, well, duh, that's literally what battle IQ is. Usopp vs. Luffy is the closest thing to Batman vs. Superman that we're ever going to get in One Piece, and Usopp very much is the Batman of the Straw Hat Pirates. He would unquestionably be the best on the crew in terms of battle IQ if only a certain character didn't exist. At number one, with by far the most controversial pick any of you could have imagined, a pick that may in fact infuriate some of you, it's Chopper. No, this is not a joke. I know it might sound absurd and I never expected Chopper at number one, but rereading his fights I realized I forgot about something that essentially makes this very open and shut. Something many of us may have forgotten about. Brain Point. See, without Brain Point, Chopper would be way, way lower on this list. I mean, this is the same dude whose idea of an epiphany is realizing that fire counters ice. However, Chopper in Brain Point is a different story. So when Chopper eats a rumble ball, at least pre-time skip, his normal form becomes his brain point form. Note that his normal form is not ordinarily brain point, it is established that it only becomes brain point when he eats a rumble ball. Once Chopper eats a rumble ball, he can now use this ability in brain point. Scope is absolutely broken. Scope's ability is essentially this. Instantly identify the opponent's weakness and how to counter it. That's it. That's the ability. It's only used three times, but each time it's basically an instant analysis with a 100% success rate. Chopper used Scope for half a second and immediately saw the weakness of the Mr. 4 duo and then f***ed them both up simultaneously. Chopper was completely helpless against Gadatsu, but he used Scope for half a second and instantly knew how to defeat him. Hell, the insane thing is that Scope even allows Chopper to do analyses that don't make any logical sense. Like he used Scope and immediately identified that Chess Marimo's weakness is his chin, even though absolutely nothing intuitive suggests that this would be the case. See, Brain Point is a form that's literal purpose is to artificially enhance Chopper's battle IQ to superhuman levels. It's almost unfair to compare the scope technique to other Straw Hats, because while the other Straw Hats are smart, they're not supercomputers. We see them slowly having realizations, putting things together, coming up with ideas, and organically problem solving over the course of a battle. They don't just problem solve instantly, whereas scope is a literal superhuman ability that specifically allows Chopper to instantly analyze and solve. A simple comparison is to Usopp, who I have at number 2 in the rankings. Chopper and Usopp both fought the Mr. 4 duo together, and while Usopp had multiple attempts at plans and tried various things before finally landing on the last strategy that defeated them, with Chopper, literally the moment that he used scope, he was able to see the clear weakness of the duo and nearly finish them off right away. While it's true that the Mr. 4 duo did manage to get back up after Chopper's plan, and ultimately Usopp's additional plan was needed for the last bit of damage, that doesn't mean that Chopper's plan wasn't effective. Chopper still immediately identified the duo's weakness, exploited it, and dealt major damage to them. The plan worked, the duo were just tough enough to get back up. So whereas both Chopper and Usopp came up with back-to-back -back successful plans that together defeated the Mr. 4 duo, the clear difference is that Usopp's final strategy was was an organic, human process of gradual trial and error, with him eventually coming up with something after several tries. Whereas Scope is like an instant plan. The moment that Chopper used it, he had a brain blast right away and saw a super effective strategy to implement immediately. It's the difference between activating a special ability versus having to naturally think of a plan. But the most impressive thing about Scope isn't just the speed of analyzing, processing, and problem solving, it's the fact that it seems to be more computer-like thinking than human. See, identifying the chin as the weak point of Chess Marimo is very unique, because it's not based on any discernible logic. 
From everything we see of Chesmarimo fighting, there's nothing that would suggest that his chin is his weakness. At least with taking Gadatsu's shoes off, or making Lasso sneeze into the tunnels, or Sanji covering up a fisherman's gills, you can logically see why someone could identify those as weaknesses. But with Chesmarimo's chin, it's not something anyone would organically identify. Chopper just scanned him and automatically pinpointed that was it. This suggests that in scope, Chopper's brain is scanning the opponent in a way that allows him to identify weaknesses that otherwise wouldn't make sense, and a normal human wouldn't recognize. So based on the speed and computer-like processing of scope, it's pretty much impossible for me to argue that anyone but Chopper has the highest battle IQ, even if it is thanks to Chopper giving himself an artificial boost. If you disagree, well, put it this way. If you gave any other Straw Hat the scope ability to instantly analyze an opponent's weakness and how to exploit it, do you think that would make them substantially more effective in battle? Personally, I I think it's just clearly the best because the ability itself is essentially superhuman battle IQ. But if you have a different Straw Hat battle IQ ranking, then let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like and subscribe, and you can get my extended thoughts on an alternate order of battle IQ on my weekly podcast by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description below. 